Okay, so in this lecture we're going to look at fallacies. Now that we studied formal logic, let's look at application. Application is basically how to spot logical errors in reasoning. Fallacy means wrong reasoning. Is a wrong argument, logically wrong. There are many different types of fallacies and we have to spot them. You see them on conversation, speeches, newspapers, TV, books and even in your own thing, thoughts. It, it can go wrong and the, the best thing you can do is keep a watch for it and see if you can spot bad mistakes in logic so the most and since these things have been around for time immemorial they have latin names and the greeks knew about it and they given them names like ad hominem that means argument against a man and for example the, the book chariots of the god is wrong about aliens because the author was once jailed so in this case you're attacking the person who wrote the book was something else you're not really attacking the logic of the book and this is a very common thing people do in politics and newspaper they attack the character of the person and not the action they're talking about and they say okay and so let's look at another example be kind be a vegetarian kind animals biju but you wear leather shoes made from animal skin so what is the problem out here anu is attacking anu personally that she wears leather shoes which are made from animal skin and and that is no way connected to what she's saying it is connected but she's just saying that vegetarian is good and be kind to animals but doesn't mean that like just by attacking her you can say that what she's saying is wrong this so to separate the person from the argument let's look at next one needling needling means basically what it means in common english i am kind to animals Dravid says you should be in the circus and don't need to listen carefully you are a joker so that's name calling you're not really at attacking what a person is saying but just calling him names or her names and we see it a lot in the news nowadays and then of course we looked at inductive fallacy in the last lecture all crows are black because i have seen a million crows and all of them are black this is an inductive fallacy that means because there are black and white crows in africa like this you just don't see them in other places and just by looking at a few examples you cannot make a theorem you have to always add a condition saying all the crows i have seen are black not all the crows in the world are black that's an inductive fallacy and appeal to authority what is the argumentum ad auditorium there are no trees on saturn because a teacher said so so in this case eugene is appealing to the authority of the teacher the teacher may be right or wrong but it doesn't really mean that it logically implies if teacher says implies that it's a fact for he says i know the earth is flat because i saw it in the new york times book review there's a book called the earth is flat by thomas friedman and just because you see it in a newspaper the book review doesn't mean it's true or false so that's appealing to authority a lot of people appeal to authority religious authority or political authority or any kind of authority your parents said so because i said so then let's look at the next one the straw man fallacy of extension so basically you have a small fact and you extend it to apply to other situations where it doesn't apply so what gandhi says children should eat chocolate So Hanifa says it is bad for the health. Gandhi extends his logic and says you want children to go hungry. No, Hanifa didn't say anything about children going hungry, but this guy is extending his and attacking uh, another part of the log by saying that you want children to go hungry. And the common example is Darwin. So Darwin said we descended from the monkeys, the origin of species by Charles Darwin. So Ingrid extends it to say your father was a monkey. So it over a million of years it might have been possible but doesn't mean his father is a monkey. Okay so let's look at the next one. Appeal to emotion. Jamil. Donate money for a hunger project. Karen. Tell me why they need money. Jamil. Do you want cute babies to suffer from it? So basically he's appealing to Karen's emotion about cute babies. and you see this on facebook how many likes for this children one like is equal to one salute it doesn't even make any sense but a lot of people 
have this kind of stuff and they appeal to the people's emotions and then a common one that we all are guilty about or mostly students uh, seen a lot in students uh, argument by selective observation including TV and uh, newspapers and everybody you just pick a good sample and then show the, the good sample and not show the bad sample almost everyone does it and you have to really be watch out of it what is a random sample as a sampling mean random and what does random mean so we'll come to that later but for example you see lottery winners on TV and you don't see people who lost money on TV or the gamblers except in movies and it only shows one side of the picture it doesn't show the other side of the picture to what happens to people who lose money and in selective observation there's example of it in, in the parable of the elephant the five blind scientists going to see a elephant and they all cannot see it so they all touch it so one person touches his, uh, his teeth and he says a spear one, one person touches his nails and it's a snake one person touches his leg and it feels like a tree one person touches his stomach and it looks like a wall one person touches the tail it feels like a rope one person is on the top feeling the ears it feels like a fan so no matter what you look at and what you observe is how you will observe the what your observation is can be different depending on the time and the situation so you have to be aware of that when somebody says something what where are they coming from it's also true in medical diagnosis some doctors say stress is activity is emotions is palability is your, is your portion size is a sugar and the same illness can have multiple diagnosis in medical science so next thing is correlation is not causation what does that mean two things are related doesn't mean that one is the cause of the other so Karen says children with bigger shoe have higher IQ so I'm buying big shoes for my daughter of course the bigger children have bigger shoes doesn't mean the shoe is the cause of the IQ and buying bigger shoes won't change the IQ of the daughter so they just correlated the IQ and the shoe size but doesn't mean that the shoe is causing the IQ to be higher or IQ is causing the shoe to be larger let's look at the next one the bandwagon argument or peer pressure Manju says I will vote for the green piece because my friends voted for it what does it mean your friends are the bandwagon and you do whatever your friends are doing and it can also apply it negatively Nandini if smoking was bad why would millions of people still be doing it if millions of people are doing it it can't be really bad of course that's a bandwagon the bandwagon can be wrong sometimes and you can't really depend on just because a million people are doing it's right or wrong okay then we have similar one another one called slippery slope it's also called the camel's nose what does it mean when a camel's nose appears under the tent it is not long before the rest of the camel comes in so the example would be Umar says if we allow smoking soon people will be smoke drugs and Parajit adds and soon they'll be selling drugs also that's a slippery slope you just extend the argument to apply to solutions which are not even imagined and then scare people and the next one is complex question tying answer the lawyer says answer yes or no witness yes have you stopped drinking so this is assuming the question that he was drinking before witness says yes lawyer says what was your favorite drink of course that there's a teacher's whiskey out here so the, the question assumes that there's a past that he was drinking in the past and that's a that's called a complex question it has two questions one is assumed in the question that he is a drinking in the past you have to watch out for these questions and non sequitur means does not follow you can just connect two facts together and expect like and and talk with a, a good accent and then people will believe it we saw lights in the sky yesterday night it must be spacious visiting the earth so the light doesn't follow that they're spacious but you see a lot of these kind of arguments and then the next one is meaningless questions Kasim says if Rajni can't stop dowry who can stop it Rajni, Rajni says if you're so smart why do you have to study Sunil what kind of idiot are you Tina why are you such an idiot Uma why did you get lost 
So these are meaningless questions. The questions have no, they're not even a question, but the people use it to advance your argument. And the next one is a bad analogy. Ophelia saying, I am a vegetarian. Priya, then don't eat walnuts. They are eggs of walnut tree. So analogy is basically you are comparing eggs with walnut tree uh, seeds. This is a walnut and it's an egg of a tree. And vegetarians don't eat eggs. And then somehow it seems that you can't eat a walnut also. That's an analogy. Then argument by jargon. You see a lot in the newspaper again. The unified field theory proves that life exists in other universe. And here's the proof. Okay, so first thing is the jargon is unified field theory. And life may exist again okay, in the other universe. None of it is well defined, but it sounds fancy. And of course, we see it in medical jargon in doctor's office. What we see is Dr. Tina says, the subject incurred lacerations, aberrations, and hematopa to the cranium after being defenestrated. Oh my god, that's serious. And then if she says in normal English, he cut and hurt his head when he fell out of the window. That's in regular English. There's another one. Doctor says, he has suffered a con contusion to the soft issue below the fourth thoracic vertebra exacerbating the proximum sternum and basically the doctor is saying you bruised a rib somewhere how tears hurt and let's look at more examples L logic of praying what is the logic of praying and you see a lot of these in students so post prayer is after the fact you pray after the exams Anu prays oh god please give me good marks so my parents will be happy. I promise I'll never ask for anything again. So this one doesn't have any effect because she's praying after the things happen. And we'll come to later on that can prayers change the outcome of something that's already been decided. And a priori means before the fact, Bina, before exam. Oh God, please help me study so and to do well in exam so I may be a better person in life with this learning. This is a priori. That means she's having intention to do well in life. And this also both are prayers, but one is you blame you are expecting God to do something. In the second case, she is expecting to study and then do well and just expecting the energy to be good for her. Okay? And what is the logic of love? This is from some Buddhist book. Uh, when you like a flower, you just pluck it. But when you love a flower, you water it daily. So there's a difference between like and love. And that's a uh, uh, very deep difference. So Saint Paul has a prayer on it in Corinthians, the Old Testament. Love is always patient and kind. Love is never jealous. Love is not boastful or conceited. It is never rude and never seeks its own advantage. It does not take offense or store up grievances. Love does not rejoice at wrongdoing but finds its own joy in the truth. It is always ready to make allowances, to trust, to hope and endure whatever comes. That's what St. Paul said and it applies in situations very if you're in doubt. And here's the logic of movies. Here's a guy hiding behind a cycle and shooting. And in the second one you see a girl running to catch a train. But she could easily get into the same compartment from the other door. That's the logic of movies. And and in, in a movie, like in this Matrix movie, there's a fight in a movie between the main guy and a load of bad guys. They will come to him one by one in an orderly fashion. So he can kick them one by one. Let's look at the GRA English. Alok says, Biju masticates at the dinner table. And Biju replies, Alok defenestrated his chapati. So what does this mean? Masticate means to eat. And defenestrate means to throw is chapati out of the window and then we have lots of exam examples from how a regular person says it and how you can use uh, better English to make it sound like something more difficult okay so p people who live in glass houses should not throw stones and a GRE student can say individuals who make their adobes and vitreous edifices would be advised to refrain from caterpillating per perilous projectiles this one is totally uh, intellectual statement and it's just a regular statement in English. There are a lot of examples, we'll skip these. 
So let's look at some more examples of fallacious reasoning. Water is addictive. People can't give up drinking water even for a day. Is water addictive? You need to answer that. So first of all you need to ask is what does addiction mean? And second one is water is deadly because everyone who drinks water will die someday. Now another example. John says we wasted money on life insurance. No one got sick last year. So is it a waste of money or not? That's a question you need to ask. So this involves probability and hedging risk. You probably didn't get sick, but does, does it mean that you better off not buying insurance? And Jim says, we wasted money on a fire extinguisher. We never used it so far. Let's not buy any more fire extinguishers. Jenna says, this medicine is about to expire. Let us eat it, otherwise it will get wasted. Because it expired. Are these correct or not? Think about it. And a lot more examples you can find in your own life. Thank you.